Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to my tutorial on regular expressions. You might not know what that term means, but it is one of the most powerful ways of using programming languages. And before I spend a lot of time trying to learn something new, I always would love to know ultimately what I'm going to get out of it. Well, a lot of you guys have asked for tutorials on how to scrub websites, meaning jump onto a website and take out all the information that you want and then do whatever you want with it. Well, with regular expressions, you can do that quite easily. Here, I use the regular expression to jump over to the Huffington Post and grab the title for a whole host of articles, links to the original article, and a description for said article. And I did that using, for the most part, about two lines of code, which you can see right here. That's what the, these two lines of code pretty much do. They go to the Huffington Post, they grab a whole bunch of information, and they sort it how I tell it to do it. Now, regular expressions are just simply a series of codes that you use to define exactly what text you are looking for. And when I mean text, I'm not talking about just letters. I'm talking about letters, numbers, punctuation, and so forth. And the reason I did this tutorial ultimately was because I actually saw a guy who I think works for Google who got all confused with regular expressions in a tutorial on regular expressions. So I was like, darn it, I'm going to fix this. And here's another example of a regular expression that will search through mountains of text to find either the word Jennifer, Jenny, or Jen. And it looks real confusing, but it's not going to be confusing for long. So let me give you some more examples here. Let's say you're given a 10,000 page document and you're asked to retrieve every street address from that document. This is a very easy task with regular expressions. I'm going to start off simple. Let's say you just need the street address and that every city is the same and there are no apartments or suites. You can also trust that what you're looking for will be of the form 123 Main Street. Real simple, simple address. You're also told that all house numbers will be no longer than five digits in length, street names are exactly one word, and every address is either a street or avenue, and a period is always used. Well, the regular expression you would use to define this would be a digit between one, two, five digits in length, that's what this means right here. This represents digit or number or whatever you want to call it. And then whenever you use these curly brackets, you're saying that you expect between one to five digits, which you can see here, three. And then what's followed by that? A space. Well, the regular expression for space is just a backslash followed by a lowercase s. And then you expect a series of characters that are going to be between one to multiple letters in length, and this W represents anything that's a character, and this plus sign represents one or more in regular expressions. And then, of course, you're going to have another space, because you can see here's a space. And then what do you expect? Another series of characters that are going to be one or more in length, and then finally, you're going to have a backslash and a period. The reason why you use backslashes with this period here, instead of just simply putting a period just like that, is because this period is often used in regular expressions to represent any character possible, except for new line, but we'll get into that in a second. So because it is a regular expression code, you have to put the backslash. It's not 100% understandable at this point. Don't worry about it. I go more into that here in the future. But that's basically what it is. It's a series of numbers between one to five digits in length followed by a space, followed by a series of characters that will be one or more, then another space, then a series of characters, one or more, followed by a period. So there is an example of a regular expression. Now, it might be a little bit confusing, but it gets a lot more confusing whenever you do this. And this is the reason why people find regular expressions to be confusing. Now imagine if your regular expression is this long. This is why people think regular expressions are really, really confusing. But I hope you're kind of gathering exactly what goes into them. They're really not as bad as people think. So I'm going to review here now. A backslash followed by a D is going to represent any number. That's what it does. A backslash followed by a capital D represents anything but 
a number backslash s represents any space backslash capital s anything <laughs> but a space we've already seen backslash w any character meaning letter capital w anything but a character and then you have period which matches any character except for a line break then backslash b matches for a space that precedes or follows a whole word boy that's confusing here is what i mean my dog it matches right here see there's a word and then there's a space and then there is another word so you would use this b if you were specifically looking for that and I'll give you further examples. But let's say you're tasked with searching through a mountain of documents for any one name Jennifer. How exactly would you be able to do that? Well, you can also search for literal text and you would do this. And I'm aiming to be as unconfusing as humanly possible with these things. So, yeah, sometimes there will be shortcuts and maybe there's easier ways to do some things, but I'm doing this to be 100% understandable. This will search for the word Jennifer, followed by a space, one or more characters, and then another space. The plus sign, again, stands for one or more of the code that precedes it. In this case, I'm stating I'm looking for one or more characters right here. And what am I trying to do? I'm trying to grab a last name. So I'm trying to find not only the word Jennifer, but I'm also a space followed by the last name for Jennifer. Now there are other codes such as the plus sign and they are the question mark. And this signifies you're looking for zero or one repetitions of whatever code precedes it. And then you have the star and this signifies zero or more repetitions. Then if you know exactly the number of repetitions you're looking for, using n to represent a number, you would use this code right here to state that you expect n of the code that precedes it to be within the text you're looking for. To try and make this more understandable, let's go backslash d followed by curly braces and then 5. What this is saying is in your code that you're searching for, you expect to find five digits in a row. Or, as I showed you in the previous example, you could say that you expect between one and five digits in a row with this code right here. And again, if there's anything that's on a little bit confusing, I'm going to be giving you a gazillion code example. So you're going to be able to really get this. Just sit back and digest and understand as much as you can possibly get. Now, while we can search for literal terms like we just did with Jennifer above, some characters require escaping, like the period that I showed you before. By escaping, I mean they must be followed by a backslash. The dollar sign is another thing that needs to be escaped, as does the period as I showed you before. So, let's say, using both those examples, you need to search for a dollar amount. How would you do that? Just simply backslash followed by a dollar sign. And then you expect a certain number of digits and you are going to define that just like that. And then you're going to expect that there be a period followed by another set of digits that will be exactly two digits in length. And this code right here would match up for this, for example, in text that you are searching for. And there are numerous other codes that need to be escaped if you are searching for them being these braces, as well as the star sign, as well as the plus sign, as well as the question mark. And you don't really need to memorize these because you're going to use them all the time and you're going to start to understand that, okay, well that's something that I use in regular expressions, so of course I'm not able to search for it without backslashing. And these are all of them. This is every single code that you would need to escape. Now, if you wanted to be able to search for specific white space characters that I haven't gone over before, you would use these codes. This would be an escape white space. This would be a form feed. This would be a new line, which if you're not new to programming, you've seen before. This would be a carriage return. And this would be a horizontal tab. So those are all the different codes that you would need there. And if you need any of this information, it's all on newthinktank.com. You can copy it, print it, do whatever you want. And of course, it's all free. And in this tutorial, I'm going to give you one more example. And then we'll continue in the next tutorial because I have limited time on YouTube. 
What could you do if you wanted to search for commonly misspelled words? Like for example, calendar is commonly misspelled. And here I'm going to show you how to search for calendar spelled wrong or calendar spelled right. And you do that with these bracket guys right here. Basically what happens with these brackets, and this would actually be D, and basically what you're saying here is you want to search for the word calendar spelled either this way or spelled this way because they're incorrectly spelled so many times. And that's basically exactly what this guy does. It will look for calendar spelled correctly and if it finds it, it says here it is and it'll alert you. I'm going to show you in code how it will alert you. Or it's going to find it with the E and then it's going to say here it is misspelled and then that's how you would be able to search for that. So I'm going to go more into exactly what these brackets look like. Let's say you wanted to search for every single lowercase letter. How would you do that? Just like this. That's it. A through Z with surrounded by the brackets. And what this is going to return is one of any of these lowercase letters. You can do the same thing, of course, with any number of numbers. Or you could search for all capital letters from A through F and all lowercase letters from A to T and all numbers from zero to four. And you would just put those in your codes and that would allow you to be able to search for all those different little things. So that's the introduction to regular expressions. In the next tutorial, I'm gonna give you more examples and I'm gonna show you how to do all these different things in code. And you're gonna be overwhelmed with examples and the ultimate goal in the end is that you truly understand regular expressions and can do great things with them. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Till next time.